I'm Brian Lenskis from the Low Carb MD Podcast, and I have a big star with me now, finally, you know, Kelly Peterson. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. You know, I'm we're having so fun. I'm so excited. And yeah. She was the here. MC at our, at the conference, uh -huh. you know, Low Carb San Diego, and and you have a book that is super critical. For, yeah, it's this keto ease. Yeah, tell people about it and tell tell us how you got started and why you wrote the book. Yeah, you know, I was born in Singapore, and living in Singapore in my Asian family, the staple food is like rice, noodle, bread, sweet drinks every day. So when I was young, my, my parents, um, they show their love to me by feeding me with good food and all that. I'm super thankful. And everything my parents cooked, I just eat everything. And you know, Singapore is like a food, um, food uh, country. We live with eating every day. We get together to eat, we get together. Everything is all about food. It works well for me when I was a kid, but it starts to turn the other way when I was like late 20, I started to put on weight. And then I realized that I have experienced hypoglycemia and I had chronic stomach acidic problem. And then again, it's like I keep gaining weight and I don't know what to do. I did all my best doing worked out like almost three times a week, try to eat as little as possible calories carrying cal calorie in calorie out that kind of concept yeah that's a uh, I know. recurrent theme here yes exactly and yeah. i thought i was doing everything right i'm supposedly doing everything right but it didn't work so i struggled with my weight for about i would say more than 20 years wow more than 20 years and this is all i can do as long as i don't put on more weight but i was 20 pounds overweight and this is all the best I can do. I have no idea that it was because of food. Yeah. yeah. So how did you start learning about low carb, keto type stuff? I mean, did someone inspire you from the family or a friend or something along those lines? Yeah, it started from a love story. <laughs> I met Dr. Dan Peterson in Singapore when I was 43. And so I've been struck all, the, all along, I've been eating the wrong food. When I met Dan, the first time we had a dinner date together, he said, um, you order whatever, whatever food on the menu and let's share. So I ordered the first thing is like, what is healthy? He's a doctor. I think he's a healthy person because he looks so healthy. <laughs> You're trying to figure out what you so, should order. To, yeah. Yes, you so, don't want to blow it the first yes, day. That's yes, not yes, good. yes. <laughs> so I ordered a tomato with shada, which is the toast with tomato on top. Yeah. Supposedly toast is healthy and tomato is healthy, so I picked that. And so we shared and we add and we chat. And eventually I was looking at him like, why is he only eating the tomato? And he's putting the toast on the side. Something wrong with this Something guy. Something is wrong with <laughs> him. Wrong. Yeah. Anyway, second dinner date, we went to a seafood restaurant and again, he said, order anything you want. And so I ordered chili crab and a pork dish and, um, and a vegetable and two bowls of rice. One for him, one for me, okay? And he said, just one bowl of rice for yourself. I'm not eating rice. My first question is, if you're not eating rice, how can you feel full? And yeah. do you mean that you just eat vegetable and meat, and why? And he lovingly held my hand and he said, because I eat low carb, but you don't have to do what I'm doing. No pressure. And I said, no, you have to tell me, what is this going on? You don't eat toast, mm -hmm. you don't eat bread, and what is low carb? And then he starts to explain to me how actually carbohydrates can turn into glucose in the body, and it turns into fat storage. Yeah, and you know what's interesting is Dr. Unwin's charts. When you show rice and uh -huh. they, people see how much sugar is in it, they can that's the one that stuns them the most. When they go, he says, look, there's 10 teaspoons of sugar in a cup of rice. And people don't appreciate, I never did. I always ate rice because I wanted to be thin, right? So you I think know. it's going to help you. It's like, I'm doing this and I'm getting fatter. What, what's wrong, right? Yeah. Rice crackers and we have Melba toast. So I was laughing. I was thinking of mm -hmm. the Melba toast that I used to eat. And, mm -hmm. and you know, mm -hmm. your husband passed those things by and just had the real food. Yeah, the, re the real, real thing is that he has been on low carb four years before we met. And when I look at him, I'm like, but you're a doctor. You're saying something that's totally opposite from what my doctor was saying. Yes. So who is right, who is wrong? 
And but the fact is that you mean you eat pork belly, you eat um, butter, and you eat all this food that I love to eat but I can't eat. Mm -hmm. And so I was, I was almost in tears. Like, you mean I've been eating the wrong food for the last two decades, all my life? Yeah, and it's a hard thing because you know I don't know yeah. if you know Ron Sinha. He's a he's from India. He's an mm -hmm. Indian doctor, but he has the same problems because everyone's eating non bread and rice, and they're getting fat and they have like heart attacks at mm -hmm. a young age. Uh, they got rid of the ghee, and now they're putting in vegetable oils, and mm -hmm. they're having tons of health problems as, as a result. Exactly. So what was interesting with him is I was asking him. I said, "What do you do if people won't give up rice?" And I'll ask you the same. He says, "Well, we, we get them on on cauliflower rice, or we mm -hmm. try different things." And I said, "Once if they won't do that?" He said, mm -hmm. "I give them fried rice." And I started laughing. I said, "Fried rice? I mean, that was the thing I would never." I wanted it, but I would never have that because I thought it would kill me. Yeah. And he said, well, because when they have fried rice, you put butter, you put other stuff in there, vegetables and things, so it's, it's a third of the carbohydrates. Exactly. And this is why um, I created the book Keto Ease, is because I have been eating all this food growing up, and it, this is a food that actually made me unhealthy. But then when I, I realized that keto, low-carb keto is my journey, I want to just convert every meal, every single cuisine, that to make it keto and makes myself healthy. And talking about rice, Yong Chao fried rice is in here. Yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting this for my patients. It's, it's critical, it really is yeah. important. And as a matter of fact, I'm gonna take your picture and put you in my talk because we have, I have several people that have done it culturally. You know, mm -hmm. I have a Vic who's Armenian, who, mm -hmm. who's lost weight, he lost a ton of weight, reversed his disease process. Mm -hmm. We have Christian Assad who's from Mexico, talking mm -hmm. about how he's helping with Mexican cuisine to do because mm -hmm. if we tell you to eat something that's not culturally appropriate, People aren't gonna do it. You know, yeah. when you say, I, 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 this is what I'm used to eating, so you go to Vietnam and you tell them don't eat rice and don't eat this and don't eat that. It, yeah. it, it, it's such a paradigm shift that people just won't do it. Exactly, especially in the beginning, the transition stage, where this is where the mental uh, challenge is. How could I not eat rice, right? So yes, you can, but the fact is that first thing, usually when I, I'm doing uh, coaching, is that I would, I would share with my client that I understand about your culture, okay? I understand it because I, I'm, I came from where you are now. Yeah. Totally understand. But uh, first understand is that when you're eating rice, you're eating sugar because it all turns into sugar. Do you realize that? Once they accept that, they are easier you know, to change their, their habit. And then yeah. I offer them the rice that is actually Retaining all the same flavor of the Yong Chao fried rice or the Cha Kui Tiao noodle and you just change it to like shiitake rice or shiitake noodle or cauliflower rice. Yeah. And the flavors is all the same. Yeah, people don't know. They yeah. don't even know when you do it that way, if you right? Take, if you don't if, tell them, you Yes, exactly. Do it, right? If you take the normal white rice, there's no flavor. Of course, yeah. It's all about the flavor. Yeah. yeah, and the shirataki noodles, when you cook them in this nice sauce and everything, it, it takes the flavor on whatever exactly. it has, right? Exactly. And ah, I'm 11 good. years right now, and I've never eaten rice for the last 11 yeah, years being keto. I'm an Asian Chinese grew up with rice. Yeah, that's incredible. And then you have the health benefits of that. I mean, how yes. do you feel since changing your diet? Well, actually, it didn't take long for me to realize that. I didn't expect that, actually. It didn't take me long to realize that my HDL went up. My HDL is like 105. Yeah. It's totally twice of what recommended is. And my trisglyceride is 44. And it's like way down from what recommended standard is. Yes. And then my chronic stomach, acidic uh, stomach, is gone away. It never happened again. Hypoglycemia, never happened again. Yeah, and you know, we have studies on that. And Tro actually did that, my partner on the podcast. Mm -hmm where he took people that had hypoglycemia recurrently, yeah. put them on a low carb diet, and everyone said, you're gonna kill the person because they're gonna get really low, they, it, it went away. Because yeah. it's a reaction to the high insulin. Exactly. And, and yeah, and especially in the Asian community, people don't appreciate, like we didn't appreciate, say, why is it that the Asians get, like the, the Indian from India and uh -huh. Southeast Asians are getting diabetes so much, at a, they're skinny and they get diabetes and no one understands. They said, this doesn't mm -hmm. make sense. They're fat, they're, they're not fat, they get diabetes. Exactly. But, you don't have fat storage to get super, you know, I see Americans who are 675 pounds but not get diabetes because they mm -hmm. could just keep pushing that sugar into mm -hmm. the fat stores yep. or into the muscle stores for people with more muscle mass. Yeah, and in Asia, there's a lot of skinny fat, a lot mm -hmm. of thin people or slim people. And the dangerous part is that because, because you're slim and you think that you're, you're actually invincible because mm -hmm. anything that you eat, you're not putting on weight so you can eat everything you want. 
It is not true. It is not true because that is the most dangerous part. In terms of emotional, when they're, di they're, they're diagnosed with diabetic as a diabetes, um, they, um, they were shocked. Like, how could I be a diabetic? Because I'm slim. Yeah, because be you can't store it in the fat. You don't have enough fat to exactly. store it in. Exactly. So it's these a, are the awareness yeah. that I bring to the Asia community yeah. using myself as experience and keep sharing about knowledge. I travel to Singapore, Malaysia, especially in my social media group. I have I, more than 150,000 members over the years. And I continuously going to Singapore, Malaysia for workshop, conference, and in fact, I have organized a low carb conference, supposedly in May, but I have to postpone it because of the coronavirus. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and when you first started this, you got heat down there, it sounds like, right? They gave you, uh, it was a difficult time because yeah. it was so different for everyone. Yes, yes, it's so different. Talking back about so different for everyone, I was like an alien when I visit Singapore in like 2013. I was like an alien, like all my friends and family is like, you don't eat rice, you're gonna get sick. Yeah. You know, you don't eat rice. Why do you, you move to America and you don't eat rice? Do you eat potato? I'm like, no, <laughs> because I'm on low carb. I don't eat rice anymore. I don't eat potato either. No, you're gonna fall sick, you know? But you lose so much weight. I'm like, how do you do it? Well, I eat low carb. Oh, you mean you don't eat rice? Yes, I don't eat rice, but you're gonna fall sick. So it's yeah, it's it's the cultural. Yeah. it's a cultural thing, and I've experienced it. It's funny because it, in in San Diego, a lot of the people I take care of are are Italian. Yeah. So everything. So I, they had a barbecue, and I go and I get the meat and vegetables, and and, and my friend's mom said, "Oh, doctor, you forgot the bread. You, you didn't have pizza. You didn't have this." And she's trying to throw it on my plate. I'm trying to get away, and I said, "Maybe I'll have it later." But for them, as yeah. a matter of fact, there's an Italian goes keto. He's lost 60 pounds and his whole family was worried about him. He said it was like the, this Italian dinner, you know, the yeah. Sunday night, everyone gets together and he's, oh, no pasta for me, no bread. And his whole family, he said the whole place was quiet. Yeah. Everyone looks like, what's wrong with him? I mean, exactly, is he, is he dying? exactly. That's totally the same scenario yeah, the that same happens thing. to me. But over the years, because I know that this is the thing, this works for me and it has been working for so many people. And I spent the first three years in, since 2009, reading every data, every book I can find. During that time, it's really hard to find in, uh, information, right? Yeah, sure. But I was determined because when I see my lipid report, I'm like, this is it. Because my whole life, I've been struggling and actually I reversed my so-called my cholesterol panel with no medication. And then again, when I've, you know, people ask me, you eat so much fat, isn't that you're gonna clog your arteries and you're gonna die one day? I do my CAT scan. CAC scan. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. Like Sean Baker, the other guy who eats meat all day, zero yes. also. So I'm not dying and actually I feel way better because I've been on this way of lifestyle, I call it a lifestyle, since I was 43 and now I'm 53 and nobody do actually think that I'm 53. Yeah, I wouldn't believe it. I know when you said that, you know, back when I was 43, I'm thinking, what? What are you talking about? Yeah, it's amazing. Yes. You know? Now, honestly, to, to be really honest, I started this, this way of eating at 43, and now I'm at 10 years later, you know, 10 years later, I don't feel that I'm actually 10 years older. In fact, yeah. I feel like I'm 35. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Yeah, and actually, I feel better than 35 because I don't have that that stomach acidic problem, I don't have hypoglycemia. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. it's so important what you're doing. I think having you, you know, your book available will help a lot of people because people don't know culturally how to reach it. We, you know, it's like you can't tell everyone to eat hamburgers and they yeah. don't want to eat hamburgers. So be able to have culturally appropriate food, it, that's a huge deal. As a matter of fact, when I'm going to Guatemala, my buddy was making a big deal because he said, Brian, you're going to talk about this, but the people, they, they eat a certain way and it's a cultural thing. It's like, let's figure out how to do it culturally and just change, you know, just exactly. like the Italians will make pizza in a different crust or they, they don't put breadcrumbs in everything or they change what they're doing. And then yeah. now he's had influence on his community and his family because he made us change. You know, it's funny because his whole family thought, because like what you're saying, you lose weight and they think you're getting too skinny or something yeah. wrong with you. Because no one in that community loses weight because they have the huge meals all the time. Yeah. So when he started to, he said, his grandfather put his arm around him and said, are you okay? Do you have cancer? Have you been checked? Are you, is the marriage okay? And all this <laughs> stuff because 
they have not seen yeah. someone lose weight and be and she said well I was the one playing with the kids soccer in the front yard while everyone else is holding their stomach sleeping yeah so it's those kind of things where you start realizing when you're healthier and then your family starts to understand more so yes. have they come on board with you a little bit now or is it still yes a- because um, the the good thing is that because I know what was for me and I make it into a lifestyle and so now I'm almost 11 years April 26 is 11 years exactly and so I am you know, doing it as in I'm showing myself, I walk the talk, and I show it because when you see me, you don't agree that I'm 53. In terms of energy, in terms of appearance, and energy or inside my body that I feel healthy is even more important. And that's the emotional, 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 emotionally healthy. Yeah. And um, also I'm very active. I do, actually I don't do a lot of exercise, which people thought that, okay, you must be exercised a lot. Honestly, I'm guilty for not exercising a lot, but I do enough to, to build, to keep my muscle mass. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, yeah, and the agility and all that. And that's the reason why I also share my story in Keto East, because where I, where I, um, I live and I grow up and my culture, where I share my story with my family background in Asia and all the experience that I have in Singapore, Many people can relate it. If you are Asian, no matter whether you are in in um, Malaysia or India or Philippines, mm-hmm. it's similar. It's similar that this is the culture that we are in, and how can we actually shift our mind to really think out of the box? If you have been doing the same thing over and over again and not achieving your result, do something different. Yeah. Because you want to have different results, you have to do something different. Yeah, because a lot of people say, I hardly ate anything today, and I'm gaining weight all the time because you're eating the wrong stuff. Yeah, you know? I mean, exactly. We've all been through that frustration. So how do people find you? How do they find your book? Is it on Amazon? It is on like Amazon. Um, in fact, uh, This is Keto East is my first book, and very proudly, I would say that this is an international award Yeah. keto book and first keto cuisine book that is being awarded. Wow, that's, that's pretty awesome. Written by an Asian, so I should, I should pluck that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And you have another book coming out too? The second book is Keto Bake, and uh, it just came out, and it's also uh, on Amazon. All right, cool. And of course, my, my website is cookinginspiredbylove.com. Great. It's all begin with love. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. It's awesome what you're doing. I'm, I'm super excited. I'm, I'm getting this book today. Thank you're selling you for having it here. me. I'm going to get it. Yes. And, uh, you know, everyone, thank you for, for listening. I think this is, this is super important. I think just understanding culturally that we all have to, like, figure out what works for us. If you hate this certain type of food, you got to eat what you like, you know? And so what Kelly's doing is huge. I mean, these are things that those of us doing low carb as a practitioners, it's hard because we want to make sure we can reach everyone you know if someone's vegetarian or vegan mm-hmm. or, or from india or from from china wherever you're from we want to make it so it works in your culture and mm-hmm. i think that's such a critical thing Super exactly important. exactly yeah. thank you so much for having me thank you for coming <laughs>